So, the next part of the lecture is about how to make a microfluidic system. And uh, microfluidic systems are around us uh, naturally. For example, uh, a towel which you dry yourself when you come out of the shower. That's a capillary, si a capillary system that sucks the liquid in its, from, from your body into the towel. Another type of capillary system we know is, for example, soil, you know, the dirt on which you walk on the ground. That is, um, like, th these are little um, silicate uh, dielectric corn uh, sand grains, and in between there are small microscale cavities, and if it rains, for example, the liquid is sucked as capillarily into the soil. But, of course, when we make microfluidic systems, we want to make systems that hopefully are a little bit repeatable. And uh, perhaps the very simplest way of doing that is what I'm going to try to do now here in front of you. It's something actually I've never done myself before and I'm going to use for this a double-sided tape, two pieces of glass and a scissors. Never done it so I don't know if it's going to work, it's going to be a little bit interesting. So what I'm going to try to do is take a little bit of tape, cut a little slit in the tape and then tape it on the glass piece and then put the other glass on top. So let's see actually if that works. I take a small piece of tape I'm not very handy, unfortunately, but let's see how far we get. I'm going to cut a little channel in here. And I cut this off. So, I cut the groove. Now I'm going to glue this part on a piece of glass. It all sticks together like hell already, which I don't necessarily want, but, well, that goes a bit wrong. So, this one goes here, and this one goes a little to the side here. So, now I'm going to put this glass on top. So. So now, I have two pieces of glass taped together by a piece of tape. And you, can't, you can hardly see that. I, I try to reflect, so you see the reflection because you can't really see the tape very well. And this little groove that I cut with my scissors here and here. So, uh, and the tape is now typically 50 micron thick. So I now have a channel that is maybe less than a millimeter wide, but only 50 meter, micrometer high between two glass walls. And let's see if this actually works as a microfluidic channel. So I'm going to take a little bit of blue dye and put that here. And if we're lucky, this is going to fill capillarily but we don't see too much happening, unfortunately. So maybe this is again one of my famous failed experiments. I don't know. Something happens, maybe if I add some liquid on the other side. Maybe the channel is a bit clogged on this side, I don't know, let's see. So we're gonna get rid of this liquid. See what happens if I put liquid here on this side. Maybe this works better. Yeah, actually now you could nicely see it. I, might, I hope you... You guys could see that also. Let's see. Yeah, you can kind of see the bluish channel from here all the way here. Yeah. So I have made a microfluidic system. Hip hoy. So, is this how we're going to make microfluidic systems? Well, it shows how easy it is. Basically, you have to make a small system that is hydrophilic, and then it will work as a microfluidic system. But of course, in uh, in uh, for real applications, which are typically going to be be biomedical, for example, you're going to want to have a system that is behaves predictable and reproducible. Yeah? So we will want a system that we understand that's always the same uh, geometry, same dimensions. We know, for example, that uh, fluidic resistance scales with the fourth power of the radius, so we want to have very precise width and height of channels. We want to control the surface roughness. We want to control the surface energy because otherwise you maybe get, you know, hydrophilic, hydrophobic. You want to know exactly how much of that you have. Very important. You want to uh, understand. You want to control the surface chemistry because anything that happens on the surface is going to dominate in the microscale. So, for example, uh, if you're going to put a biological sample, you don't want all your sample molecules to stick to the to the surface. So you're going to coat the surface with a, a blocking agent, typically. Maybe you want to deposit some receptors. Anyway, you, we will want a more reliable system to manufacture uh, instead of just taping something together like I did here. That's what I'm going to talk about in the 